Hey Pascal here, nice to see you again on my channel and today's video is about drone video editing. So I will give you three video editing tips that work extremely well for drone footage and will make your videos more outstanding. But let's first watch the intro and then we'll get on the computer and I will show you those three tips. So we know drones are amazing and with the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro series it became more accessible for everyone. But of course to make it outstanding and really look good you also need to know how to edit your drone footage. And today I will show you my three or three of my best tips in Final Cut. You can also do it with Adobe Premiere or other video editing apps but it might be that some apps don't have the full functionality that you need so it really depends. Um, one app that you can also use if you cut on your iPad is LumaFusion, that's a great app. But yeah, like mentioned before, we'll use Final Cut now. And the three tips are actually two tips about real video editing and one tip for color correction so that you get a bit more detail in the distance. But this will be the last tip. The first will be to use speed ramping in your drone videos. Because in drone videos, you usually fly very for, or you can fly for a very long time in one direction or you can make the same camera movement for a longer time and so on. And speed ramping works extremely well with that. So that's one effect that you definitely want to use in your drone footage, in your drone video editing. So I will show you how that works now in Final Cut. So here I have a clip of the Gili Islands and Gili Travangan of a resort where I stayed and I'm flying my drone backwards to give a nice overview of the complete island and the next Gili Island is Gili Meno here and this is Travangan. The islands are really not big, it's so beautiful there, are no motorbikes, no cars or everything. So that's great. And yeah, now I want to insert my speed ramp and usually I would cut the speed ramp to the music. So when the music makes this bam, 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 then on a bamp I want to have this speed ramp where it makes like poo. And yeah, to do that, like I don't have a music clip here now, I just show you how the speed ramp itself works. So the first thing that you do is you press command R because then you can already see the speed indicator here. That's a nice thing to have. And then let's say this would be the position where this bamp from the music is. Then I press three frames backwards. One, two, three. You can see from one, two, three, from seven and nine frames, seven seconds and nine frames. We go to seven seconds and six frames. And then I press shift B. And then I go to the position where I want the speed ramping to end. So where it should slow down, slow down again. So I'm here now. I would say here it's good because it's directly after this movement where the camera still goes up and reveals a bit more of the island. This is a nice, nice point to end the speed ramp. So press shift B again. And you see like when I press shift B, it makes this two cuts here in the speed. And now what I can do, I can simply double click that part here and I can change the speed of the clip or of the part of this clip. And so right now I would say for that it's more of experience. I would say 2000% could work good. Let's see how it goes. goes up and there's a speed run but it's way too slow. Uh, let's say 5000%. That's better. It's not perfect. I will set it to 7000. And I will make it a little bit shorter because I also want to stabilize this clip and that makes it a bit faster to show it here. So you can see now it goes up pretty fast. That's nice. It's a nice speed ramp. But it is a bit shaky because I'm changing the camera movement. First I only fly the drone high and back or up and back and then I point the camera up or start pointing the camera up and that means that it's not very very solid here anymore, very smooth. So you can smooth it out by turning the stabilization on. It takes a while, we'll speed it up when it's done. So the stabilization process is done from Final Cut, it took a long time. So it already looks a bit better, but it's still not perfect. So at first what I usually turn down is the scaling. I don't want that and then I turn them up. Those sliders and now it should look a lot better. 
Yeah, it's much better. You can even do it a bit more, like putting in 10, for example. Let's see how that works. And that's great, right? So you have this nice revealing shot flying backwards, filming that mother with her child here in the resort, and then bam, it jumps up and shows this nice island here. I love that. So that was the speed ramping. It's very important with drone shots. You can do so much with it and you can really show more of one clip because usually you have two or three seconds or less depending on the music that you choose to present one clip. But with speed ramping, you can actually make bump, bump, bump with lots of speed ramps to the music and it's still interesting even if you show the same clip all the time. So speed ramping is a really cool feature. And the next thing that I will show you is the dolly zoom. Dolly zooms, you probably know it from the Mavic 2 zoom. It's basically the drone flies forward, for example, while zooming out and this gives a nice effect. But you can create, um, not exactly looking like that effect because the lens compression is missing, but you can create a very similar one in Final Cut or in most other video editing apps. So I will show you how that works. Okay, here's the dolly zoom. So I choose this clip here, which has a steady movement already. And this effect works best with clips that go in one direction, either to the front or the back. It's not that good when you move your drone to the side or something. So um, this drone flies forward, so I want to zoom out. So what that means is that I use a scale. Let's say I zoom in by 150%. You should use 4K footage for that. With 1080, it's not that good. Oh yeah, and I forgot to set the keyframe. Make a keyframe at the beginning. And then you go to the last frame and you make 100. And then you can see that it looks like the background would move. Like it's not just this flying forward anymore. I can show you before and after. So let's undo it here. That's the normal clip, how it looks before. And that's the edited clip. Looks much nicer, right? But it's a bit much here and 150% zooming in is not that good. So here I would go for 120%. Still this nice effect here, but you don't lose so much quality and it's not too crazy this effect. But I really love it and it's very easy to do just to first, like when your drone is flying forward, then your first frame is a frame where you zoomed in your first keyframe and then the last frame is fully zoomed out again so that it zooms out. And if you do the opposite, if your drone flies backwards, then your first keyframe is 100% and your last keyframe is zoomed in. You always zoom in the opposite direction of the movement of the drone, then you get this nice dolly zoom. So this is a really nice effect. I really love it and DJI tries to make it more popular right now using the Mavic zoom. So this is cool because with the lens compression if you use it in the Mavic, Mavic 2 zoom then it looks even nicer than doing it in post but post is usually enough already to give it to give a nice effect. So the next thing the next tip that I have for you will be using color curves while color grading because with drone footage in a lot of cases you have some objects that are farther away and it looks a bit foggy usually you don't have much details there anymore and by using color curves you can make it look a bit nicer so um, I will show you how to do that with another clip. So let's learn color grading with color curves because they are amazing and I will use this clip here as you can see I have a lot of foreground objects here on the palm trees the rice fields and so on but also in the background you see this mountain and that's where color curves can really help a lot because we want to get a bit more contrast in the mountains to make them a bit more visible. And I already applied the first color correction here, base grade. I used the D-Log M to Rec 709 a lot from DJI to get it from D-Log to the 709 color space. And I did some manual corrections to make it look better. And now I will apply the color curves and I will start making those points here on all those um, edges of those lines and yes it's a good starting point but those are not always perfectly working so and then I just play around at first so what I want to see here is what do they do so this actually takes out contrast out of the 
mountain because it affects those bright areas. So I want to go one step beyond and I actually want to make the shadows of the mountain darker. Oh yeah, that looks good. Now you can already see how much more detail is in the shadows of the mountain, but we lose some shadows here in this area because there are some like areas that have the same luminance level as we created now here. So I also need to pull the next one down a little bit more to get rid of that. Um, cannot do too much of that, of course. Um, I would say maybe don't do that effect too much here. And let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks good. Now we have some detail back here. You can still see top of the trees and maybe a little bit more here. In that area, I don't want to break the foreground details. Okay, that looks good, yeah. So you can already see it before and after. It looks nice, right? We also took out some of those incredibly bright areas here in the palm trees. So we give it a bit more color, basically. Yeah, I like this look. And yeah, so we can already see the mountains a bit more, but let's play a bit more with those here. So what we can do with that by raising it is to make a contrast between the sky and the mountains a bit more. Oh, it's also not bad. And this will be affecting the, r the bright areas of the mountain. And I would say that's good, yeah. Yeah, so now you can see the before and after can clearly see how much more details we have in the back there. And of course, if you don't like what the curves do to those palm trees here, I personally like it right now, but maybe you have another preference. What you could do also is to create a simple mask here, a form mask, and you can only apply this effect to this part of the image by using that mask. And uh, that's not really working at the moment. And yeah, by dragging this point. So now you can clearly see how much more details we get into there. The problem with masks is that if you have too much movement going on, if you change directions or so on, you might animate the mask and that's a bit complicated. But yeah, like, this is awesome, yeah? I like it. And yeah, this is the magic of color curves. What I could also do now is I could apply like for my final look, I could apply a second color curve and I can create an S curve. S curve creates a bit more contrast in the image and usually it works for nearly every single clip. And you can see it looks so much better, right? Just because of that little S curve. Maybe you can do it a little bit more actually. Yeah, that's great. That already looks much nicer and all done with color curves. It's so easy. So I think you got a better idea of what you can do with color curves. I really love color curves because it's so easy to use and you can do so much with it to your image. And especially for drawn footage like you've seen, it works great because you usually have objects that are very far away and that are a bit dusty, foggy, whatever. And you want to bring detail back there and color curves work perfectly so i really hope you liked that video and your drone footage or your drone videos will get a lot better in the future and if yes then please hit the subscribe button now because i publish one video per week either a travel video or a tutorial so you can learn a lot more and yeah see you in the next video